Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you how to make a simple gothic window. We will work in ground floor. I'm using as a reference a picture I found on Pinterest. I'm gonna go to my folder. I'm gonna drag and drop it here to my ground, uh, ground floor view. Now I would like to measure the window. I'm sure it's larger than what we need. So from this point to the right point here, we have 10 meters. Now, of course, this is a bit exaggerated. So if you want to scale your image, click, click on the image, type on the keyboard, Control K. This will resize it. Just keep the settings as they are, click OK. And now from this point, I'm holding shift to have uh, this line straight, but as you see, the window is not actually straight. But I'm imagining the window ends here. So I'm going to click, and then if you want to insert the dimension, you can, or you can just scale it by eye. But I'm going to insert, pressing R, I'm going to insert the new distance that I want, and I want it to be 2 meters. So I typed and enter. Now I don't need the dimension anymore. So now I know that I have more or less two meters here. We're gonna draw over this image with a polyline and because I want to see it I want to make it red. Now as you see the window is not that straight so we're gonna like to make it straight so now i'm i'm using a rectangular to go up to here so as you see is 199 so i'm gonna press r and i'm going to the first dimension dimension one and i'm gonna type two so that's gonna be two meters and now i'm gonna create some new points so i'm going here Let's hope this is the middle. Right. Now, I would like to make a curved edge. And I'm going on this side as well. Side as well. Okay. Now we have the end. And because we need to make this point, this line here as well. I'm going to drag a copy. So Control Shift D to drag a copy of this polyline that we just created. I clicked on this point and I'm dragging it, but I'm not clicking because I want to click in the same point. Click. Now you have two polylines overlapping and you do have one selected. So now I'm going to click on an edge and just drag because I want this um, menu to appear so I have offset all edges now go inside I'm going to type point 1 after I created the frame I need to create this recess that's on the inside and we're going to make it in one piece and as you see it has some curved uh, corners so we're going to do that as well, but we're working with polyline still. And I'm going to do the same thing I've done before. I'm going to do a rectangular shape. And wherever you can see the curve starts, you end the, the rectangle. And then going with the arrow, you're going to select and create another point. Now, this edge here has a bigger curve than the other one. I'm just following the image. And because I've done this on this side, uh, I will copy it, but I first want to um, curve this edge and I'm going to fill it or chamfer. Now 
we're going to have to guess. So I'm going to put 0.1 and let's see how the curve is. Yep, it's perfect. Now let's do the same curve on the on the corners here. Usually it keeps the setting. You see 0 0.1 0 0.1 on this side. Now I'm going to mirror this one. So with this shape created, Control Shift M, and I'm imagining this is the X, the middle X. So I've done a mirror shape. Now I have to do the middle one. Now it's going to be a bit more difficult because we cannot use a rectangle anymore, and we will need to make half of it, and then we'll mirror the other half. Now, I think I'm going to use another color because I need to see the half that I have here. So I'm just going down a bit just to see it. And I'm going uh, to change the color pen again. I'm going to red. Now, we will need to create this one in one piece. So let's. What I will do is I will use uh, the blue line as a reference for my axis. So Control Shift E because I want to rotate it, and I'm choosing this point here, and I'm just dragging it up a bit where it seems I have the points. Now I need to change these corners here, so I'm dragging this point down. I'm dragging this point as well. Okay, now we don't need the blue lines anymore. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm clicking on this corner here. And I'm going back to fill it. You see, we kept the same settings 0 0.1. And if you want to apply this to every corner, Remember to check this apply to all corners. So I'm checking this. Now everything is rounded. I don't need a picture anymore. So I'm going to drag it um, near my image. And now you can see how it looks. And now we need to create uh, the slab. Now, if you want to make sure your slab stays between a certain shape, you need to select it. Now, I'm selecting this, which is the bigger piece, and I'm going to slab. And when I'm clicking inside, holding the space, which is a magic tool, it will take the shape. So we will have the, a slab in the shape that we chose. Now let's change the settings of our slab. Um, we can keep 30 centimeters uh, in width, but I would like to change the material. So I'm going to, in the image, it seems like metal. So we can do this copper. Now, because I want to remove uh, the inside so i want to make a hole i'm going to click here on one point and then this window appears again we have the option to subtract from polygon click on that holding space again i'm trying to click here so i would like to have all the, the this entire hole cut no it doesn't let me let's see if it lets me okay
Okay. Now, because I have the frame, I will need to create the, that recess. That's still a frame, but it's just going to be inside. And that one, it's going to be smaller than 30 centimeters. But we can use the same slab. So you need to type on Alt on the keyboard. And then you have the other one, which uh, will select the, all the tools that you've done. So now, after I have that slab, I'm going to click here. See, it took this shape. Now I'm going to make the holes. No, I'm going to keep this holes for now. So I'm going back to this point. As you see, the subtract from polygon is selected. Holding space, I'm making. Now I would like to change the height, the thickness of this slab because I want it to be a bit on the inside. So I'm going to make it 26 instead of 30. So 0.26 and then enter. And if you want to see how it looks, you just go to generic perspective. And if you ever want to center your image, here you have this uh, fit in window tool. And you can see this one is 30 and this one is smaller, but we need to drag it down a bit. So if you want to drag it down, type Ctrl D and Now you can see the recess. Now we just need to add the glass. So I will go back to my ground floor. And uh, here I know I have the polyline that I'm going to use again. So I'm going to snap. And I'm going to click again here in this space because I know it's going to create the whole shape. So click. Now, if I if I'm clicking here, where I know I didn't use to have anything, now I have um, the shape that I'm going to use for the glass. So I'm going to make it. Uh, I can make it glass blue, but I want to make it smaller. So I'm using offset all edges again, <coughs> and I'm going to make it even smaller. That's actually going to be easier for me to see it. Now the thickness, we need to make it 0, 1. And now if I'm going to generate perspective, I have it here. I just need to drag it down to be on the inside of our shape. So selecting, then Ctrl D. And then just drag it down. Now, I see this one, it's too low. Let's, I'm going to drag it up a bit. Okay. Now, the window is almost ready. We just need to create uh, the hole. So, I'm going back to ground floor. Back to my line, polyline, back to my slab, I'm creating a new slab again. And now I know this is this, the slab that I need for the hole. So because it's going to be a hole, I'm going to make it air. So it's going to have no material at all. So this is the air. Now the thickness doesn't really matter, so you can leave it as 30. But you need to change some settings. So now, with the slab selected, go here to your settings dialog. We need to change the ID here. So the ID is SLA004. Now we're going to change it to wall hole. So type on the keyboard wall hole and then click OK. 
Now it's going to make no difference when you check it in the perspective, that last slab that we've created. But when you create the window, you'll see the difference. Now I'm selecting everything here. I don't really need the polylines, but they won't matter anyway. So everything that's selected here, I'm going back, to, I'm going here to the file libraries and objects save selection as window so i'm going to put a name here Gothic. and click save now let's make a wall so that we can apply this window now I'm making a wall here and I'm going to generic perspective. Now our window is going to be very tall so I need to adjust my wall height and I just want to make different materials so let's try we can use actually some stone Now, when you're going to your window here in the tool, <coughs> toolbar, you see the last one selected is the one that you just created. Now, you can actually see um, the shape of it. Now, if you click, you have your window here. So, it's saved in your libraries. If you don't like the way it comes out of the wall, select it and point to, and now it goes inside. So now you have the window with the frame, it's in bronze. Of course, you can change all the settings. So if you have this window selected and you go to your window settings dialog, you can see everything that you can change so you can change the surfaces so i'm going to make it now um, plain anthracite okay so you're not stuck with the materials that you chose initially because this is like a normal window it has the same tools and settings so you can make it uh, high, higher you can make it larger in width see but the frame is going to adjust uh, as well so this is going to be a bit weird but you can adjust it in height now i'm going to just drag more copies so Control shift d Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and if you